So here I'm taking one by two lumber and I'm putting clamps on it so I can slowly but surely start stretching it around that curve to match that shape. A little bit of pressure at a time. For several days I'd come out and tighten up those clamps just a little bit more at a time so we can start slowly but surely stretching across the curve of that front without snapping the wood. As I got closer to the top and I had nowhere else to put the clamps I used ratchet straps that I secured tightly in the back and started pulling those ratchet straps down a couple ratchets at a time until I eventually made the curve for the top of that. Next it was on to working on my top trim so I uh, measured out cut then glued uh, my top 1x2 to stretch the length of that to meet up with the bottom of that curvature where I will eventually cut an angle into. Now it started off with the glue but it will as well be screwed into it. Um, the glue is just because I glue and screw everything but screws were added. After that I marked off the angle where it needed to be cut and I got up there and trimmed it down so that I could feel that curve the rest of the way in. After I completed the top and the fronts of this I went ahead and trimmed out the nose to match the angle to go down in the front and uh, trimmed off the tops where it overhang and met up with that curve and then I cut uh, little small blocks to put in to fill that void underneath where it wrapped around to make it a, a smooth transition and then uh, from there I just went on and applied the side trim. To create the side trim I worked in one foot sections and what I did is I made a jig that gave me um, the right width to match up with the one by three trim I was going to use on the top and bottom and did it in one foot sections to make that curve uh, cut out with jigsaw after using my stencil. Working on this trim, start getting this thing trimmed out, go from there, you know what I mean? We'll see uh, what aspires from that. The Overland trailer I'm building for this is set for 33, so this is just for visuals. So here are just a few day-to-day -day picks as I worked around the camper getting that trim up and getting it on, sanding, a wood filler, sanding, trimming, you know, still not done yet, but just some pictures for you to, to see the progression of it. Here's where we be so far. Mock up 33 because that's how it's going to sit. Of course, I'll have, I'll be building the whole trailer, it'll have the fenders and all that stuff with it, but working on all the trim work right now. And then after I got the trim done, I did these little triangle angle looking pieces in the back just for character and then started working on my drip edge. So for the drip edge, I wanted to create a homely feeling. So I cut a three inch wide strip of the uh, foam that I use for the inside. And I used Type Bond 2, glued it to the side um, of that camper, shaped it, sanded it up, and then PMF'd it. So I have a nice drip edge above the door. I'm making my little drip edge. Just got through cutting it out and shaping it out of foam. It's glued to the PMF on the wall, and then uh, I'm getting ready to PMF it, but it'll give me my drip edge lip over the doorway. Be pretty cool. Also gives me a spot to install a 12 volt light in there, a little porch light. That's what we're doing right now. Working on it. It's getting there, slowly but surely. Working on my Make America Great again. All right, so we got the top part of that tight bond two down. And get ready. We'll let that dry and get ready to work on the bottom of this lip and go from there.
All right, so I'm not gonna spend much time on this door with this video because I think you pretty much get the gist of uh, how the PMF works, um, gluing it and spreading it and all that. So I just wanted to show you um, what it's looking like. This is the inside of the door. I flipped it over and now I've started uh, wrapping it around. I'm not doing the arch part yet up front because I wanna be able to uh, put slits in it as I pull it over so I can make sure it uh, goes over that arch correctly. But this is, uh, this is where we're at on that door. And the next time you see this, it'll probably be just done. I mean, aside of like installing the window and everything. All right, let's get on with the rest of this video. So what I'm doing right now is I'm fiberglassing this, but uh, I'm only able to fiberglass on top of this foam because I PMF'd it first, which is a uh, poor man's fiberglass, which is gonna be your tight bond too and your canvas. Now, that's all really that I needed to do was the Type Bond 2 and canvas. I don't need to fiberglass it, but I want to fiberglass it because I want to have something sandable, smooth finish for when I paint it. That's the only reason why I'm fiberglassing over this uh, PMF because it's already good as it is. I don't need to do that, but I'm gonna do that. So, uh, but the, but the, my uh, purpose for explaining this to you is because if you try to fiberglass straight on top of your foam, it's going to, as, as it uh, goes through its chemical reaction, it's gonna get too hot. And it's gonna melt up your foam. It's gonna, it's gonna distort your foam. It's gonna tear it up. But since I already have that barrier, the Type Bond 2 PMF and the Type Bond 2 on top of that, and now I even actually have primer on top of that on this, I've got plenty of a, uh, a sufficient barrier, heat barrier, to be able to fiberglass on top of that. Now, most people you're either gonna do fiberglass build or you're gonna do a PMF build. Uh, actually, I haven't seen anybody else that's done a combination of the two because it's kind of redundant and unnecessary. But for my application, it's necessary. So that's what we're doing right now. All right, so I ain't got a clue what I do with my shears. Give me a minute, I'll be back. All right, I found them. Thumbtacks. Always have these readily available when you're doing stuff like this for vertical uh, pours. These are amazing. Don't swallow them. Try to for forgive my obnoxiously loud dog. She's my heart. So what I'm doing here is giving myself some more manageable sections to work with. So I'll have the inside of the section of my protruding uh, body line that's going to be on the camper. Work that, I work the outside, work the base as I'm fiberglassing it in. So that's what we got going on. Chop, chop. Just to be clear, the mask I'm wearing right now is not for COVID. It's for my work.
right, y'all. I think my audience is smart enough to understand. Apply fiberglass. But stay tuned because next week we're going to put this thing out in the river and see if it still floats. Till then, I'm Sax, signing out. See you later.